Today, we're going to soft mod the Nintendo 3DS, a fun little handheld I'm sure you're all aware of. By the end of this guide, we'll be able to run homebrew software, we'll be able to emulate other systems, you'll be able to even back up your game cartridges and play them off your SD card, as well as a host of other features I don't feel like explaining right now, like region unlocking. Modding the 3DS just opens the potential up so much, and this guide will work with all versions of the 3DS. I'm actually basing this off a guide I found online, which can be found at 3ds.guide.hack. Did I get that right? I've closed it of course, pretty unprofessional. There we go, 3ds.hacks.guide. I can't remember what I said now, but anyway, that's definitely the URL, and it is a really great tutorial. So I've sort of made this to be like a visual version of that. And this is on the basis that your 3DS is running firmware version 11.15.0, which as of recording is the most up-to-date firmware. But I have a feeling that Nintendo are pretty done with the 3DS. They are going to close the eShop soon. So my hope is, is that they won't ever update to new firmware, but who's to say? So before you begin, do your own research, but otherwise let's get right into it. Don't laugh at my pink 3DS. Well, you can if you want. I bought it heavily discounted brand new while working in an electronic shop years ago. First, we need to make sure it's not already modded. You might not know if bought secondhand, since the custom firmware appears the same in the 3DS's main menu. Hold down the select button as you power on. If it's modded, a custom menu will appear. Do not attempt this guide if the console is already modded. But if not, we're good to go. Next, connect the handheld to the internet and sign into a Nintendo account as per usual. Don't worry, Nintendo isn't known to bring the ban hammer down on modded consoles unless you really push it. Cheating while playing online would be a red flag for instance. Now let's discuss SD cards. In a word, they're cheap and plentiful, and the one included is slow and old, like your mum. Keep in mind that it does need to be formatted to FAT32 to operate in the 3DS though. SDHC cards up to 32GB are easily formatted in Windows to FAT32, but anything beyond that, and you'll need a separate program to format. That's a bit beyond the scope of this video, so I'm going with a 32GB card. Insert it into the 3DS before starting the mod. This will ensure the 3DS knows it's a thing, and will create file systems and the like. This tutorial is for the firmware version 11.15.0, which as of recording is the latest version available and has been for the last 12 months. I'd be surprised if they updated again, but do your own research before commencement. To check what version your 3DS is running, navigate to the system settings and the version number will be displayed on the top screen. Now, insert the SD card into your computer, and there should only be one folder named Nintendo 3DS. Inside that folder, there will be a folder with a long string of numbers and letters as its name. Copy this into a text document. On your 3DS, navigate to the friends list, and note down your profile's friend to code. Back on the computer, navigate to the first website link below, and copy your friend code and that long string of text into their relevant fields. Hit go. After a short time, a new friend code will be generated. I knew you were capable of making friends. Back on the 3DS, select Register Friend, Internet, and input the code you received. You can name them whatever you wish. Move your attention back to the web page and do not refresh it. It can take a few minutes, but eventually a file named movable.sed will be generated. This is your system's encryption key. Download it. Now turn off your 3DS. From here, there are several ways to proceed. The one recommended by 3ds.hacks.guide includes using a freely downloadable game from the eShop called Pokemon Picross. But since the eShop is slated to close soon, I've gone with a route that doesn't rely on Nintendo services. Instead, we'll be using software called Boot9 Strap that hacks the firmware using exploits in the 3DS's safe mode. Along with the movable.sed file, we'll need to download a few more programs. These are Safe B9S Installer and Boot9 Strap. Direct download links should be in the description, along with the latest release of Luma 3DS, which will be the custom firmware making the magic happen. On their GitHub page, also linked in the description, download the zip file and unzip it. If other downloads are zips, unzip those also. In your browser, navigate to another website linked in the description called the Unsafe Mode Exploit Injector. Upload your movable.sed file and download a zip named Unsafe Mode and unzip it. 
Okay, it's now time for a bunch of file transfer. Be sure to follow closely, and if you get lost, there is always the official guide link below that explains the process in text form. First, copy the boot.firm and boot.3dsx files from the Luma 3DS folder you unzipped to the root of the SD card. Next, also in the root of the SD card, create a folder named boot9strap. From the boot9strap folder you downloaded, copy the files boot9strap.firm and boot9strap.firm.sha to the boot9strap folder you just created on the SD card. Next, navigate to the safe b9s installer folder you downloaded and copy the file safe b9s installer.bin to the root of the SD card. Then, copy the file usm.bin from the unsafe mode folder you downloaded to the root of the SD card. Staying on the SD card, navigate to Nintendo 3DS, the folder in that, and then the folder in that, both with long strings of text as their names that will differ depending on your system, and there might be a folder named Nintendo DSiWare. If not, create it, naming it exactly as you see here. If the folder does exist, back up any .bin files present to your computer, and then delete them off the SD card. The folder should now be empty. From the unsafe mode folder you downloaded, copy the file f00d43d5.bin to the empty Nintendo DSiWare folder on the SD card. Now, reinsert the SD card into your 3DS, turn it on, and navigate to the system settings. Choose Data Management, DSiWare, and then the SD card tab. Select Inject Hacks, that's with two X's, and the 3DS will power down. Now, simultaneously, hold down the left and right shoulders, the up on the D-pad, A, and the power button until the system powers on. This is a bit awkward and took me a couple of attempts, but if successful, we'll boot the 3DS into safe mode. It will prompt you to update. It won't actually do that, but this is part of the exploit. Press OK, then press I accept, followed by OK. An error message will be shown after a short time. Press OK. A prompt will then appear, asking to configure the internet settings. Select Set. Select Connection 1, Change Settings, Page over to the right, Proxy Settings, Detailed Setup, and the 3DS will boot into Safe B9S Installer. It will prompt you to enter a key combo. Press A, and the system will reboot into the Luma 3DS Config menu. From there, press the start button, and the system will again reboot, but this time using Luma 3DS as the firmware. It will look exactly the same as the stock firmware, however. Now, navigate to the system settings, data management, DSiWare, and the SD card tab. This time, select restore slots, and the system will reboot. Turn off the 3DS, and insert the SD card back into your computer. Navigate to the Nintendo 3DS folder, the folder within that, the folder then within that, Nintendo DSiWare, and delete the f00d43d5.bin file. Now let's download some apps to run on your snazzy hacked 3DS. I'll be showing those recommended by the online guide as they're a great bunch to get you started. Links to the githubs are in the description. First, there's FBI, which is used to install .cia apps, a common format you'll find in the world of jailbroken 3DSs. Download both the .cia and .3dsx files from the GitHub. Next, there's Animoni 3DS, which is for installing custom themes. Download the .cia file from the GitHub. Checkpoint is used to back up and restore save files on both the 3DS and DS. Download the .cia file from the GitHub. Universal Updater is a handy app store for downloading apps directly on the 3DS. Again, download the .cia file from the GitHub. The Homebrew Launcher is used to run smaller homebrew programs using the .3dsx format. This is opposed to larger .cia applications that can run from the 3DS's main menu. Somewhat ironically, this is a .cia app itself, so you'll need to download the .cia file from the GitHub. Lastly, God Mode 9 has a few different functions but can notably back up your game cartridges and save them to the SD card. So, you guessed it, that's right. Download the zip file and unzip it. In the root of the SD card, create a folder called CIAS. From the app files you've downloaded, copy anemonis3ds.cia 
fbi.cia, homebrew underscore launcher.cia, and universal hyphen updater.cia to the CIAS folder you just created on the SD card. Next, create a folder called 3ds in the root of the SD card if it doesn't already exist. To that, copy the file fbi.3dsx. Now, from the root of the SD card, navigate to the Luma folder and if it doesn't exist either, create a folder named Payloads. From the God Mode 9 folder you downloaded, copy the file godmode9.firm to the Payloads folder you just created on the SD card. Lastly, from the God Mode 9 folder you downloaded, copy the whole folder named GM9 to the root of the SD card. Now, reinsert the SD card back into your 3DS and turn it on. Navigate to System Settings, Other Settings, Page Right until the end, and choose System Update. The 3DS will then reboot. Next, navigate to the Download Play app. Once the 3DS and DS buttons appear, hold down the left shoulder, down on the D-pad, and the select button at the same time to launch the Rosalina menu. Choose miscellaneous options, and then select switch to hb.title to the current app. Push B until the menu exits, and return to the download play app. Push the home button to navigate to the home menu, and then the X button to close the app. Now, relaunch the download play app, and the homebrew launcher should load. Again, hold the left shoulder, down D-pad, and the select button together to open the Rosalina menu. Again, choose miscellaneous options, but this time select dump DSP firmware. Push B to continue, and then select nullify user time offset. Push B until you can see the homebrew launcher again. Select the FBI app. Press A to navigate to SD, CIAS, current directory, and then install and delete all CIAs. Press A to accept, and once the install process is complete, press the home button and close download play. All the new software will appear on the main menu and can be unwrapped, just like the Christmas you never had. Now, turn the 3DS off. Now, hold down start while turning the unit on. This will launch God Mode 9, and this remains the case once your modding journey is complete. There will be a few prompts. Say yes to both. Press the home button to bring up a different menu. From there, select Scripts, GM9 Megascript, Scripts from Plalex Guide, Set up Luma 3DS to CTR NAND, and the A button to proceed, A again, and then the prompted key combo. Once that's complete, choose Clean Up SD Card. After that's finished, press B to go back in menu and choose Backup Options. Select Sys NAND Backup and take a break. This will take a hot minute. Once it's done, B to go back and choose Exit. Press A at the prompt. Navigate to the SysNand virtual option, select essential.exefs, copy to 0 forward slash gm9 forward slash out, and A to continue. From there, press the home button and select power off system from the menu. Next, insert the SD card into your computer and navigate to the Luma folder. Copy and back up the folder, aptly named backups, to a safe place off the SD card. Additionally, also copy and back up the files you see here, which I'm too lazy to say, that can be found in the folders GM9, then out. These backups are necessary if you somehow brick your 3DS. But after that, plug the SD card back into your 3DS, and you're done. If you need to configure Luma 3DS for any reason, hold down the select button while turning the console on to boot into its menu. Otherwise, the Universal Updater is a great place to begin. Why? You can install and play a 3DS version of Wordle, or homebrew 3DS versions of Halo and Portal. You can even download an app to make the LED flash a bunch of colours. The possibilities are endless. Another notable starting point is to launch into God Mode 9 by holding the start button on boot to dump cartridges to the SD card. This way, you don't have to carry them all around while travelling. Game Boy Advance gaming is noteworthy too, since the 3DS can play the games natively. I've been using a program called OpenAGB Firm to do this. The link can be found in the description. 
So, as you can see, modding the 3DS is a slightly involved process, but should be achievable by just about anyone. Just be sure to follow the instructions exactly, and again, check out the written guide I'm basing this video on if you get stuck or require more information. It's one of the best I've personally found when it comes to this sort of thing. Otherwise, get going and explore the wonderful world of homebrew and modding on the 3DS. There's plenty to discover. I'll see you out there. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.